our guest today, Kristen, has kindly included a free healing that takes place toward the end of this episode. This is a gentle but powerful healing. I respectfully ask that you don't listen to this episode while driving, operating machinery or being the sole carer for anyone vulnerable. This is because you may become drowsy, may fall asleep or may enter an altered state of consciousness. One thing you can do is download this episode to keep so you can go back to the healing as many times as you like. Welcome to the Healing the Patriarchy with Love podcast, the show that celebrates people who are making the world a kinder place by being the medicine to patriarchy. Hello everyone, it's lovely to be here with you again. I'm your host Luna and today I'm joined by the wonderful Kristen Jones. Kristen is a spiritual business coach for healers and soulpreneurs, as well as an intuitive quantum healer. She helps healers step into their power and create abundant businesses with their soul gifts that feel aligned. Hello, Kristen. Welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you here with us all. Hi, thanks for the introduction. I am super excited to be here and talk with you. Oh, it's honestly, it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you for giving up your precious time and your wonderful skills with us all. I'm really looking forward to our chat today um, and I'm excited as well. So it's going to be a good one. I can feel it uh, in my bones, shall we say. (laughs) Um, So just for the audience and the listeners, I'm just going to kind of give them a little bit of background about how I came to know you and things, things like that so that they can kind of get an idea of how we've kind of come together so uh, what happened was I sort of um I don't know if I've ever told you this actually audience but what tends to happen with this podcast is every now and again I just kind of get a nudge from the universe that this is kind of the thing that we need on on the show and and sometimes it's in the form of It just kind of will pop up on social media and I'll instinctively know that's the person that I need on the show. Or sometimes I get intuitive nudges. This is what you as an audience need to hear next. And so I will kind of actively look for that out in out in the world to bring on the show. And it was kind of a combination with with this because Kristen um, popped up, I think it was on Facebook and it was on social media anyway and I really liked her instantly she's she's honestly she's awesome so you know she'll give her social media links and please do go and check them out because she really does post some good stuff on there and I just really liked her vibe but also I saw that she mentioned witch wound and I was like ah oh, you know what I've heard that before but I don't know much about it And I just instinctively know that I have one. In -hmm. fact, I have a ginormous one. I'm just going to own up to this right now. I have a massive one. (laughs) Um, And I felt like maybe you, the audience, might also have one. So I think you're really going to want to stay tuned and just kind of listen to what Kristen's got to say and be open, kind of check in with yourself. You know, have I... (laughs) Because if you have, Kristen's going to talk to us all about, you know, how it can show up in your lives. And, um, you know, sometimes it can be quite destructive, I believe. So it's going to be really interesting to get Kristen's all her expertise on this and to get her point of view and to get to know a bit more about it. So, Kristen, do you want to just kind of maybe tell us a bit about what is a witch wound? Because, you know, that's a bit of jargon to somebody that doesn't automatically know what that is. So could you just kind of explain what that what that is? What does it mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. And also, thank you so much. It always brings me so much joy to hear, you know, that my content is supportive and is helping in some way, shape or form. And so I'm super, super grateful that that was it for you. And also the, um, the vibe is something I work on every day is the magnetism because energy is energy, right? Energy doesn't lie. And so I I love that you were able to pick up that energy. Um, and I love how the universe just brings us together the perfect aligned timing. So that's super fun. Um, so what is a witch wound, a witch wound So what we know about the witch wound from like history, you know, you can even just like talk just a little bit about 
the Salem witch trials, because I feel like a lot of people are very familiar with that, how primarily women were, were burned at the stake, were drowned, were shunned out of the community, were pushed out of the coven because of their abilities. Now this is witchcraft. It or what we know as modern day witchcraft and things like energy work and tarot, um, natural healing abilities. But this was also people that did holistic type healing and doulas and, and um, women that were truly healers in the sense of not just witchcraft as we know it today. And so when we talk about this witch wound, it is the things that were passed on, whether it's in our soul or in our ancestral line, that were the fears that were embedded in those times. And these show up in several different ways. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like the explanation of like what a witch wound is, is these fears, these limiting beliefs that feel life. They literally feel like life or death that are showing up in our life today that are typically pretty common things that, that a lot of people, um, struggle with, especially in the healing community. If you identify as a healer, a light worker, a spiritual being, um, but we're not very aware of where it's actually coming from. Yeah. Oh, do you know, as soon as you're talking about that and really recognize it because I used to kind of work as a healer as in paid work I mean obviously I'm still working as a healer because um as you were just talking about energy is energy you know I still kind of do a lot of energetic practices that are work as a healer and I still heal myself um and no doubt I'm probably healing things from the planet that I don't even know about because we kind yeah. of do that don't we but yes. when I worked as a healer, which was some time ago now, and I've I've needed to have a break because something happened in my life that kind of required that. Um, but before I used to go and run, I used to do like women's goddess wisdom circles. This is a long, long time ago. This we're talking 2014, I think was the first time I did one of those. Um, this is what used to happen to me. I used to feel like I was gonna before people arrived for the circle. And I used to hear a voice saying charlatan. Mm -hmm. So would you say, is that, would that be a witch wound? Would that be how it might play out for people? Can you maybe give some examples, like working examples of how it shows up in people's lives maybe? Yeah, absolutely. So yes, like these fears of like, what is going to happen when people show up? Am I going to be able to do this? That is imposter syndrome as we know it today. But yeah. it it does show up as a witch wound. So yeah, I could definitely dive into, you know, um, some of the most common ones and just starting with like how it shows up. And I'm going to give a little bit about business because if you are, whether you are a, a healer in the closet, I'm like, we're in the healer closet or we're in the broom closet. We're like sitting in the corner, hugging our, <laughs> our broom. And we're like, please nobody find me. I am safe in my corner of the world. But the truth is we are more powerful together. The coven was never meant to be alone, whether that is with one other person or a group of women, a coven of women. And so that fear, that deep fear of speaking out or being seen. And so when, how it shows up in your life is this is like having a really hard time standing up for yourself. It is speaking your opinion, sharing your witchiness and your abilities, sharing that your love for crystals or tarot or Oracle card readings, maybe, maybe even something like meditation sometimes feels very uncomfortable in the beginning to talk about. And, um, if we're doing these deep inner practices, those show up, can show up as a witch wound. So if you were a witch and you were persecuted and killed for it, would absolutely make sense that you struggle with the fear of sharing your gifts with the world. And I know that sometimes these witch wounds are like, okay, but like I had this thing happen when I was a kid or a couple different things happened when I was a kid and a teenager or even as an adult. And it's like, well, yes, absolutely. That does have a subconscious belief and an imprint that does and can affect you today. And also why did this happen? 
not everything is in our control, but why did like, why did this happen? And where did this come from on a soul level? When we are, when we have this ability to heal these inner child things that are happening, we are freeing ourselves from lifetimes before. Um, and so in our business, like if you have a business or you desire to have a business, what this can look like, if you're not having this deep fear, or if you have this, sorry, if you have this fear of speaking out or being seen, you're actually not sharing your gifts with the world and making the impact, you know, that you're here to make. And this can also look like you're fearful of going live or showing your face on stories or doing the posts or sharing the new offer. I can't tell you how many healers that I have talked to in the past several years that are like, I want to have this business, but I don't want to show my face. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You can have a successful business without showing your face, but why? What's the actual root of it? Is it actual, actually a deep desire to not show your face or be like be known in that aspect? Or is there something else? And let's, let's dive in and discover this. So that's, that's one of the, the first one anyway, that is a huge way that this shows up and, you know, can really, if you are like, oh, I really identify with being a healer. I really like, you know, maybe, you know, Reiki, or you want to learn Reiki or any energy work or anything of that nature, or you want to do these services. Um, but you are fearful of being seen, this can inhibit you from moving forward and sharing your gifts in the world. But when you take the opportunity to really heal this, it makes a big impact in the way that you can show up. And also it helps you attract those more, more of those types of souls, whether it's just friendships, acquaintances, or clients, it's all alike. Right. So this can like show up anywhere in your life. And yeah. Yeah. So, and it sounds like it can show up not just as a lack of confidence. There's a lot of fear that you, that you've been talking about there. So there's kind of like, cause what I think I was thinking then was, well, okay, how do I know if I have one or whether I'm just lacking confidence? Cause some people perhaps have confidence issues because of something else. Um, so how do we differentiate between I've got a lack of confidence and I'm absolutely terrified and there's something in my subconscious past that's yeah. affecting it? How, how would somebody kind of differentiate between that and no? That's a really great question. And the first thing that comes to my mind is confidence is not something you're born with. It's something that you gain along the way. How do you gain confidence in something? You do something and create those wins. So on the logical aspect of this, because I, what I really love about, you know, kind of like what I do is I, I have this beautiful, like, um, flow and harmonization of the spiritual side and the logical side, because it's, I do feel that it's important to understand those, those things as well. And so the logical side is we create confidence by creating wins. And if we're not creating the wins, how can you move the target closer? So, you know, let me just give you an example of what this could look like with confidence. Um, you know, they, maybe you are shooting for like a specific goal. I keep seeing this vision of um, like a shooting range. So I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> um, I am very like clear voyant and clear audience. So I receive all these downloads. So I'll just share what I'm seeing. Um, so it's like, you know, maybe you are going out to do some target practice or whatever. And um, you shoot this bow and arrow to this target that is like, I don't know, half a mile away. And you're like, wow, I've been doing this for hours and I'm not even coming close and I'm just really not any good at this. But what if you move the target closer and you're like, okay, I'm going to move this like 10 feet in front of me and I'm going to practice it until I hit the target. Chances are, if it's 10 feet in front of you, you're going to hit the target. And so you, then you get good at that. And then you, um, I live on a military installation, ironically, as I'm talking about this and the, the B1 is flying over me. So I'll just wait just a moment. <laughs> oh, 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 wonderful. <laughs> Sign that we're on target. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
I'm like, I won't even like, this is just real life over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with the, and there's a good chance that another one will take off. I never know what's going to happen, but, um, so you, <laughs> you continue to hit that target and then you're like, okay, I'm going to move it back another five feet. So yes, it's going to take longer for you to get to that half a mile target, but who cares? Because you are creating wins along the way that creates confidence. Wins creates confidence. Stacking the wins and allowing that confidence to grow. And that is really a mindset shift. Truly it is because it's, it's a decision to step into that awareness and allow yourself the opportunity to stack the wins, to consciously look for the wins and stack them all. So when it comes to, um, is this a lack of confidence or a lack of fear? The fear feels like you're absolutely going to die. Like it literally, like you're sweating, your nervous system is off. You're like, what are people going to think of me? And we don't always consciously understand, but we're, what our 3d, our physical body is doing, is trying to keep us safe. And so our, everything in our, from our brain is activating into our body. And then that's, that's like the anxiousness, the, the, um, like the, the shallow breathing and the sweating, the, sh maybe a little bit of shaky, maybe feeling like you're going to get sick. Like literally, it literally feels like a deep fear. Like what will actually happen if I do this? It does not feel safe for me at all to actually share my, or be seen. Yeah. Okay. That was brilliant, by the way. I love that you used your um, clairvoyance there to give that mm -hmm. analogy. It was so, so good and really helpful for me because I lack confidence. So I've never really thought of it as being something where you stack the wins and, and yeah. that you make the wins achievable, you know, that that's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I guess where I'm going to now is I'm kind of thinking, okay, so we know what a witch wound is. We know the difference and we know how it can sometimes show up. What I'm wondering is if you've healed your witch wound, what would that look like? Yeah. If you've had a witch wound, you've healed it. Can you talk to us a bit about, you know, what kind of changes come in when you heal it? Yes. So when you do heal your witch wounds that are showing up, and I can definitely chat about a couple other ones if that feels really good. Um, but when you choose to heal this witch wound, what is going to happen? Like, for example, it, well, one, it's going to like overall, it's going to create a liberation and freedom from within. And those are the two things that it's like, that is exactly what I'm here to do is to help, help women healers um, light workers, which is like really step into your power. So you reclaim your sovereignty and you understand that you have the power all along. And you also create this deep safety and knowingness that it is okay to be seen and heard. It is okay to connect with your intuitive abilities. It is also safe to increase your intuitive abilities. And that's something that happens as well is that you know, once you start to do this healing, this deep healing work, your intuitive or your psychic abilities do enhance. It's funny because I was just talking to my husband about that last night because I did a post yesterday on what it's like to work with a psychic, psychic and intuitive coach. Yes. And so he was reading it and he was like, that was sassy. And I'm like, because it's funny. <laughs> and you know, we, we think of psychic being like oh, this crystal ball reader and I see in the, to the future. And it's not always like that. Sometimes it's the weird clairvoyance things that come through that you're like, I have no idea what this means, but here you go. <laughs> and just really deeply trusting that. But the more that you allow yourself to unshackle yourselves from this lifetime and lifetimes before the more liberation you create within yourself and also gives you the opportunity to naturally be able to start creating this domino effect of the people in your life, whether it's, you know, those that are directly around you that are impacted by your energy frequently or within the world, we heal one, we heal all. 
Yes, I love that. I'm a great believer in that. I really believe that, you know, it begins with us and it radiates out. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you want to just kind of maybe explain a bit to the audience, like how that works? Yeah, I would love to. So when, I don't know, there's studies shown out there and I don't, I'm believing that there's like scientific studies that are like, when you, when you do this healing, it heals back seven, seven generations. And I'm like, first of all, who decided it was only seven generations <laughs> in the past and going forward. And if we know that energy is infinite and um, time and space in a, is an illusion, seven generations is a joke <laughs> in my opinion, my opinion. And so when we begin to heal ourselves, the energy is felt. Energy doesn't lie. I mean, have, have you ever walked into the room, like either yourself or, you know, for anyone listening, have you ever walked into the room and you could just feel something was off and you're like, Ooh, I really, I got to get out of here. This is not good. Or I need to protect my energy stat. Or on the flip side, you meet someone and you're just like, wow, they radiate such an amazing energy. It's just, everything is felt. And so as you begin to heal yourself, it impacts those around you and people see or feel how you have changed just as a nat at naturally. When we talk about the generations in the past, let me just give you an example. Cause I think that examples are really powerful. Something that happened for me was when I was healing the witch wound or the witch wound, but when I was in deep, deep, deep in the biggest spiritual awakening that I had and doing healing, a lot of healing work, I started healing like my inner child and also did a lot of healing work with my family, specifically like my parents, my sister, um, grandparents and things of that nature. A couple years later, my parent, my parents had come visit for a random weekend and being a military family, we don't live anywhere near home, but they were able to make it out. And, um, we were sitting at the table after doing a hike and my my dad started apologizing for things that had happened many, many, many years ago. Things that I like when, when he started talking, I was like, Whoa, I didn't say this out loud, but I was like, wow, I, I already, like, I already feel so much peace around this, but the fact that, that this healing was happening within them and the awareness was happening within them was really, really powerful. And so even going forward, I have two kids, I have two boys um, I have a teenager in a, so a 15 and currently almost 11 and the healing that I see occur within them because of the work that I do is powerful. Even as young, like young 3d humans, you can see that they're very wise souls and the shifts and the change that happen and occur because of what the work I do. And so it's literally, it literally is a liberation that happens across the lines of time, even if you don't live anywhere near. Um, and this happens with my clients too. In my Raising Phoenix program, one of my clients reached out and she's like, is it normal for your family to all of a sudden be asking you what you're doing or like, like start he doing healing work when they had no interest in it before? And I was like, absolutely. She's like, I never said anything. This is really strange. And I'm like, absolutely. It absolutely happens. Yeah, I, I have examples similar myself as well, kind of, um, but my dad's in spirit, but but I still sort of work with him and, and things like that. And and something happened when I was getting divorced and it was a really, really nasty divorce, very adversarial. And um, my dad was kind of wanting to help and he was in spirit and he, and and kind of the healing I was doing, like instantly, the ne the very next minute, li I mean, literally sometimes the next minute I would get an email and something would have shifted and changed and gone more towards my favor. Um, and it was like it was kind of a bit of a roller coaster in all honesty. But the more healing I did, the more I could see it kind of spreading out to the family and, and our light affects people so. You know, they don't even have to be living with us. They, 
you know, they can just be kind of within our soul group, can't they? Kind of like our soul family or whatever, and they can be affected by our energy. And I, I once had it explained to me by a witch, funnily enough. <laughs> and she said, if you take two bowls of fruit, and one bowl is full of rotten fruit, and one bowl is full of, full of fresh fruit, and then you buy two new pieces of the same fruit one in the bowl with the rotten fruit and one in the bowl with the fresh fruit the one in the bowl with the rotten fruit will go off faster than the one that's in the bowl with the fresh fruit mm -hmm. and when you think about that that does happen doesn't it and she said it's the same thing it's people are kind of sinking to each other's energy really aren't we yes um and it's almost like a tuning and it's really a conscious decision to choose to not to keep your vibration high. And, and look, I, even, even as an, like a quantum healer and a spiritual coach and like doing all the things, like sometimes it's even hard for myself when I'm around specific people. And this is, you know, again, conversations that I've had lately too, ironically enough. And it's, it's like, you know, not allowing yourself to be influenced by other people's energy and being okay with walking away if you are and not being too surprised when, when certain people do fall away because you don't align with their energy anymore, but just knowing that you get to continue to do your own deep healing work. And those who, you know, even if they did fall away, they're still being affected by the energy and the healing work that you do whether you're aware or they're aware of it or not. Yeah, I really do believe, I do believe in that. I really do. And, you know, one of my teachers um, says that you become the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. So if yeah. you're constantly spending time with people or situations that you know aren't good for you and they aren't bringing out the best in you, then what's going to happen is you're going to become the sum of those five people basically and it's going to kind of almost weigh you down whereas if you kind of release them and move away um, into something when I say release that just makes it sound terrible when we're talking about people but you know what I mean I don't yeah. mean like yeah. a bypassing oh just don't have a conversation with them just walk away I'm I mean be a conscious communicator be be an adult be assertive but um, when you kind of have to leave people in situations, then your energy can be at its optimum. Mm. That's when it kind of reaches its prime, I think. Yeah. So, so we've talked a bit about kind of what it's like to have, not have the witch wound and about optimum energy and, and how it can kind of like the healing of that can spread out right the way through the ancestry and I agree with you. I know it is very typically believed. I think it's a shamanic belief, actually, isn't it? That it affects seven generations behind and seven generations ahead. But I agree with you and have seen in my own healing when I've been in a quantum, in the subconscious space, basically healing. I have seen it go right the way through the lines of the ancestry, right the way through. So I do believe that it can go further than that. But let's just say somebody says okay I know I've got a witch wound I want to be you know at this this positive energy and, and my best version of myself that I can be free of this witch wound for the sake of ancestors so how do I do it what do they do what is the first step that they they can take to do that to become a better version of themselves and to be liberated from the witch wound yeah what do they do? That's a great question. So um, I think before like I give a few tips, I wanted to share a couple other ones because the fear of being seen and heard is a huge one. Um, but just to give you a couple ideas, because you're like, okay, well, that one resonates, but like what else? Um, this can look like disconnection from your intuitive gifts and abilities um, because you know you feel fearful around uh, sharing them. It can look like constantly being worried about 
being punished, attacked, or hurt by others physically, mentally, and emotionally, even if you have no reason, like if you are unsafe, then please, please, please get support. But if there's, if you're like, well, there's no actual logical reason why I feel this way, then this is a huge sign of a witch wound as well. It's like, what happens if you show up? What will people say? What will they do? What will they think of you? Um, there's like this voice in your head that tells you you're a fraud or an imposter. This could look like, will people even believe that I can do this? Or will they think that I'm being deceptive or manipulative? Will my gifts even be received or my abilities being even be received? And then the biggest one, in my opinion, that is so untalked about is being uncomfortable around, around women and having a really hard time connecting with them. And this one, oftentimes I hear, well, I would just rather be around men because they're less dramatic or there's less drama or like, the, it's just society has placed it like so normal for us to repel against each other as women. And when we think about how this resonates with the witch hunts era, it's women were turned against each other to protect themselves from getting burned at the stake or accused of being a witch. So they are literally looking out as they were, as they were being murdered and looking out to the crowd and seeing these people that they love so deeply that are part of their, their coven, part of their tribe, a part of their community, sisters, friends, best friends, aunts, like you name it literally just watching, hiding, looking the other or look, looking the other way because they need to save themselves. And so how we take steps to really heal these is the first one is always, I always am a believer in awareness. Awareness is always the first step. It's like, okay, I've got this. I understand like these resonate or this one deeply resonates. How like, okay, what's next? Like, I see this and I honor it. Um, one of the really beautiful things that I love about the work that we do as healers and, and spiritual beings is the inner child work. But I also don't want to ignore the inner teen as well. We incarnate, if you believe in reincarnation, which I believe that most people listening to this podcast would, um, but if you believe in reincarnation, we are a high vibrating soul having a 3D human experience. And so anything that we heal in this lifetime is part of our soul. It's not part, it's not just part of our physical body, it's part of our soul. And so this takes it with us. So it's healing the past and it's healing the now. And it should your soul choose to reincarnate on this planet next time, then or you know, next lifetime or whatever, then it's going, this healing is, is with you. And so the inner child work is a really, really beautiful place to start and understanding, like, if you are uncomfortable with women, under, women, understanding where that came from, what was it that you experienced and really doing this deep inner child healing. Um, this can also look like hiring healers um, energy workers, Akashic records readers, and allowing yourself to be supported. I cannot express this enough. And also in the deepest times of need, it is even more important, but as spiritual beings, I believe that amongst everyone on the planet, we need the support more than anyone because of the deep work that we do, not just ourselves, but for everyone. Um, and so also, I would say, um, those are the main ones that enter the awareness, inner child healing and, and also hiring support. I mean, there's also, you know, you could do past life regressions and healing in the Akashic records and, and hiring people to help you with those. Also remember your power that you are able to do this and, um, this unconscious or subconscious reprogramming is a powerful one as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually training to be a quantum hypnotherapist and, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the past life, lives that kind of you, you see whilst you're regressing people does involve what, what you've described, you know, as the witch wound. Absolutely it does. And, and it is one way. And 
I love all those different ways that you've spoken about, but I'm particularly intrigued about the inner child. Can you kind of, and the inner teen, <laughs> yeah. even inner and an outer teen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <Could you> maybe, <laughs> sometimes I'm a moody teenager. Um, so can you maybe talk to us a bit about their roles and, and how, how they can be you, utilized to kind of heal? How does that how does that show up and what does that look like? You cut out just a little bit. Um, can you do you mind repeating that for me? Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. OK, so I was just talking about the inner child and the inner teen. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just joking that I have an outer teen. And Ooh. I was wondering <laughs> about about both the inner child and the inner teen, you know, what that looks like. Um, how that shows up and how they can be utilized as part of the healing of the witch wounds. What, what's their role? Yeah. Ooh, I just got chills and like, like my heart center just got warm and it expanded it, it completely out. And so, oh, it's funny because before we were even recording this, um, I mentioned to you, I got a download on the way home from the gym of something that I wanted to offer the audience as far as like a like a mini little guided uh, visualization that'll be super useful that you can do in just a few minutes um, that involves the inner child and this role that the inner child but to explain like this role that the inner child plays is I mean it's time we're our soul our 3d experience human experience is is part of our soul. And so when we look back at like, you know, let me just use bullying as an example, or, you know, experiencing like cattiness as a, as a female, if you ever experienced that as a child or a teenager, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I think everybody was like raising their hand <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and it's like this, this, tie to um, being uncomfortable with women and having a hard time connecting them, we can easily tie this back to the inner child. And it's like so many girls, I even watch my, my teen and preteen nieces, because I don't have girls. <laughs> but and I'm just like, yes, I see this even now where it's like, there's so much cattiness. And it's like, well, why, but why? So yes, we can tie this to, you know, what their home life is, but on a soul level, there's this disconnection and, and the societal creation of this disconnection of women and this competition energy and this let me do it. Let, let me just thrive and, and you come in or not, right? And so when we tie this to the inner child healing and when we begin to heal this, it liberates us as an adult. It frees our inner child and it liberates us as an adult, which liberates our soul. And we begin to understand that it is safe to have um, connections with women. And it's actually powerful to have these connections with women. And it also becomes undeniable as you begin to look around the women that do have witch wounds. And I, I can, I can like, just off the top of my head, I'm just like, I see these beautiful souls. I see you and, you know, we can do what we can do, but as we begin to liberate our own inner child and free our own soul, it helps liberate the women around us as well and helps create that connection. And that's true for the inner teen as well. So that's just like one example of the role that the inner child can play. And so, you know, if you have that specific one, or if you are feeling, um, I think that's the biggest one, but like also this, this connection from your intuitive gifts and abilities, because there's a lot of like this quote, good girl energy, sit down, shut up. Don't make, don't even be seen or heard. I don't want to even hear a peep out of you. Right. Um, or, you know, maybe your gifts and abilities, most children have their gifts and abilities tuned in tap as Esther Hicks says, tuned in, tapped in, turned on. <laughs> 
And it's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I, I feel like a lot of children are kind of shut down from their gifts and abilities. And so it's reconnecting with that inner child and understanding it's safe to be seen and heard. Um, it's safe to speak out. It's safe to use your voice, understanding as a child where that actually came from and what it is that you need now. What is it that you need now um, to feel safe and heard? And how can you stack the wins? Um, so I would love to do like a little visualization if that's okay. But before I, I kind of tap into that. Um, I just want the permission, of course, and then if you have anything that you want me to elaborate on. I would ab absolutely love you to do the visualization and thank you so much for being willing to come and do that with us all. That's really kind of you. Um, and I because my inner child always needs healing, the big uh, a big area of mine that always needs attention. I guess everybody's does, but mine seems to be a difficult one <laughs> so I'm very grateful and I'm sure the audience will be as well so yeah please do please yeah. share that download with us that would be just wonderful yeah yeah of course okay so so I'm gonna I would like to offer like a different perspective of how things can be and so I would love for you as you're listening um you know, to just kind of get comfortable. And I'm just going to guide this through quickly, but of course you can take this concept and you can re-listen to it. It doesn't have to be this long drawn out process, but it can be done very quickly and effectively. And so the first thing is, um, for you first, first memory that comes up as a child, I want you to just take a moment and think about what that is. First thing, and it's, it's, don't even question it, it's coming up for a reason. And then once you have that, I want you to just take a moment, kind of like look at what it is that was going on and just tap into that feeling for just a moment. What does that feel like of that situation that happened as a child? I want you to hold that for just three seconds. And once you have it, hold it for three seconds in your body, notice where it is, and then just let it go. The next thing that I would like for you to do is I want you to show yourself an image. You can close your eyes or maybe you can just see it. Like even with your eyes open, you can usually get a good visualization of an abstract design of how things have been for you. And so when I say abstract design, this is kind of like, like that art that kind of doesn't look like anything, but it's just kind of like blobs. So it's not something that's actually identifiable, but it looks like something. And so would you just pay attention to if it is jagged or if it's like round, is it big, does it take up space? And then what color is it? Is it like black or gray? Is it like a specific color? Is it dull? Is it bright? Like really just identify that. And then what I would like to offer you is a new way of thinking. Now, I don't think that I don't, it's not necessary, rather, it's not necessary for you to see yourself as I see you. But I would like for you to see me as I'm seeing you. And so I'm seeing you as going to bed at night, maybe brushing your teeth, just kind of reflecting on your day. And you're like, wow, wow, this, the situation that was happening that my inner child was really calling out for help, needed healing on. She wasn't triggered at all about this. And actually this thing happened today. And I was just like, huh, 
cool. No big deal. And I'm seeing you with this new, just feeling at peace and ease, feeling confident and really just smiling and like, yeah, things are actually good. And I feel so good. And I'm no longer bothered by this situation. And so that's how I'm seeing you. Again, you don't have to see you as that, but I've got that vision and intention for you. So what I would like you to do now is I would like you to just close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose, spine straight. Of course, if it's safe, if you're driving, please don't do this. <laughs> but take a deep breath in and then exhale and think the word release. And keeping your eyes shut, if it's safe to do so, I would like for you to just imagine with me this way of thinking. So I want you to imagine just for a moment that we're going to call him Tom, that Tom has a picture in his pocket. He keeps pulling it out and he's looking at it. And then he's getting like huffy and puffy and he's putting it back into his pocket. And he's like, and then he looks at his watch 10 minutes later and he pulls this thing out of his pocket and he's looking at this picture and he's like, ah, he puts it back in his pocket and he does this a couple more times. And so you walk up and you're like, Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> I see you keep pulling this picture out of your pocket, but I don't understand what's causing so much anguish. What's, what's going on? Tell me about it. And he's like, what is this to you? And he turns, he turns the picture around and he's like, does this look like a rhino to you? And what he's showing you is a picture of what looks like a rhinoceros. And you kind of giggle and you're like, huh, I'm still like not really understanding why this picture is causing so much anguish, but I'm going to let him continue. So Tom continues and he's like, I've showed this picture to like 10 different people and every single person says, this is a rhino charging. And I keep looking at it, wondering what this rhino is doing and why it's charging. And I don't understand. And you just put your hand on Tom's shoulder and you're like, yeah, except that's not a rhino. That is a snapshot of a time in the past that a rhino was charging. It's how the rhino was. It, you, there's no possible way in hell that you could even fit a rhinoceros in your pocket. That is simply a snapshot in time. And Tom just exhales and he's like, wow, I have been waking myself up at 4 a.m., I have kept looking at the snapshot in time, this picture, the snapshot in time and not understanding. And now I get it. And so this is exactly what happens when we have something happen in the past that is an imprint in our mind. That is a snapshot in our mind. Our unconscious mind sees something that it felt important to snapshot and now it keeps playing as a picture in time, though you are no longer that child. So I want you to think about um, that child, that child's age of which the memory that popped up. And so I just want you to think of what age that was for you. And just for the sake of this, I'm just going to say seven so I can just call it out. And I'm going to say she. Um, just because that is my pronoun, but please use whatever age and whatever pronoun resonates with you. And so I want you to, again, eyes closed. If it's safe, take another deep breath. Make sure that you are sitting up straight. And I want you to imagine that your hand is out in front of you. And you know those Polaroid pictures um, that you would just take an, a picture and it immediately like comes out and you kind of like, I'm shaking my hand, but like you can shake your hand and then it just develops right there on the spot. So, so you have one of those Polaroid pictures in your hand and I want you to look at that child, that old version of you, but that child, it's a picture of a child of the memory that popped up into your head. And I want you to just look at that picture. 
And then I want you to come back here and now. I want you to look at that picture of that seven-year-old child or the age she is. And I want you to come back here and come back now and stay here with me. And I want you to look at that picture again. And I want you to see that it kind of starts moving. And you're like, huh, interesting. And then come back here and be present uh, and say, I am here now. Take another deep breath. And release. And I want you to go back to the, the picture that's moving. And all of a sudden, it is now one of those like big old box TVs from like the eighties and like even the nineties before like the cool flat screen LCD TVs came out. And so the picture is no longer in your hand, but now it's like this, this snapshot in time is now a movie and you are just watching the memory that happened. And then you realize I am watching this movie. I am here and I am here now. And then you, you go back, reflect back to the TV, you're watching it in motion and you realize that beautiful child, she has survived every single day since that memory, every single day she has gotten up, she has survived. You are here. I am here. I am now. And so now we're going to go back and forth quickly. You're watching the TV and then you are here. I am here. Watching the movie on the TV. I am here. TV. I am here. Back here to the present moment. Back and forth. You understand that there's no possible way that you are seven or the age of that that child anymore. There's no possible way you could ever be that age anymore. You are here. You are here now. I want you to go ahead and take a deep breath and release. And the next thing I want you to do is I want you to just imagine this beautiful, sparkly, glitter like energy dancing all around you it's just dancing it's playing all around you and i want you to just name the color of which you see there's no right or wrong it's perfect for what you see this beautiful sparkly energy in the color that you see and i want you to imagine that the sparkly energy is dancing all around you it's clearing it's cleansing it's going all around your energetic body, your 3D body, and then it's going into your third eye. It's dancing your third eye in your center of your forehead, between your eyebrows, cleansing your brain, going into your nervous system, into your bloodstream, traveling down into your heart center, dancing around your heart, cleansing and clearing your heart. It's almost making you giggle and laugh because you know you have made it. You have survived every single day and you are here and you are here now and clearing out your cellular system, traveling down to your fingertips. You can feel your hands vibrating. You may even feel like you start to shake a little bit. Everything is okay. You are safe. You are here all the way down to your solar plexus, your womb space, all the way down to the bottom of your toes. Take another deep breath. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And so the last thing I want you to do, and I would love to hear from you as well, if you would, if you care to share is that abstract design that you um, thought of that popped into your mind at the beginning. I want you to take a look at that now and let me know what you see.
Thank you. Um, do you want to know what mine is or? Yeah, if you if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm okay today, yeah. Um, but thank you so much because I didn't realize I was gonna offer something so deep and so beautiful. Um, thank you so much. That's really, really kind of you to have done that for the audience and for me. Thank you. Um, so my abstract design was white paper and black charcoal scribbled really angrily. <laughs> Doesn't mm, surprise me. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and then just then basically half of it has been just completely rubbed out. Wow. The whole load of that has just gone with what you've just offered there. So thank you so much. And, yes. um, yeah, I think what I felt was like this kind of like this reassurance coming in. It's kind of like maternal energy kind of healed maternal energy because not, not all maternal energy is nice. <laughs> um, yeah. It's very healed motherly energy of kind of reassurance of it's okay to just be different now yes and oh, oh thank so you beautiful you're so welcome and and that's just how fast that we can shift like sometimes we think that it's going to take years and years and years to shift and heal and process and 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 that's just what we've been taught and that's fine but there's also another way and that's you know, that what I did was rapid resolution therapy created by Dr. John Connolly. And um, I recently got certified and trained in it and it's powerful. It's fast. It's effective. It's painless. It sometimes is so fun. And, and that vision, that abstract design and how it has shifted has, is an actual visual representation. That is the perfect lock to you the, or the perfect key to your lock that is showing you that something actually did transfer and shift and heal in your subconscious mind. And so you can continue to do, do this with that specific one or anything else, um, so powerful. I'm glad that you shared that with me too. Cause that's really cool. Yeah, well, thank you so much for offering that. Um, and yeah, it can be that quick, can't it? You know, yes. it doesn't always have to be, you know, crying on the bathroom floor. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> yeah, in the shower, on the floor. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's a problem. It's, that's part of the human experience, <laughs> though, too. But like, it doesn't have to take forever to heal we can we are powerful so powerful yeah and I think it's really good that we have access to that now because you know you were talking about um earlier about kind of watching your your beloveds you know your, your coven the the women that you loved you know potentially as you were being burned at the stake or hung or persecuted when we think about that, you know, they didn't necessarily have access to rapid transformational therapy yeah. or you right? know, intuitive quantum healing or, or, or hypnotherapy or any other, you know, modality that's out there that we have now. And yes, they have powerful ways of healing, you know, they're possibly more in tune with nature than we are now, for example. But um, it's not the same, is it? You know, and they didn't have access to that. So now that we have, I think it's kind of we almost owe it to ourselves and our ancestry to to seize that opportunity to heal all this. I mean, isn't it just such a gift to be able to do that for our ancestry and for people, you know, within our past that haven't had access to that, you know, and the lives where we, we do that. I think it's kind of almost a responsibility now to seize the opportunity and do as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's just it. Like giving ourselves that beautiful opportunity to like, and I was just thinking, you know, uh, when I think about the patriarchy, you know, th with the name of your podcast is beautiful because I think that there's so much anger and hatred and just, um, angst against the patriarchy. And it's like, okay, but it's not happening. Well, that's not true. It is happening now, but what anger is completely like I dare to say boldly, it's completely useless because it's not giving us our power. How do we take our power? We take our power by 
holding it in our hands and seeing that we had it all along and placing it back within ourselves by doing the inner work. And we liberate ourselves because we can rise above it. We are rising above it. That's exactly what we're doing here. Yeah, that, that's it, isn't it? I mean, <clears throat> I think anger, like everything, has it has its place. If you're feeling angry, I think you have to honor where you're at and and allow yourself to be angry and and work with it in some positive way. You, I think, creation being creative is quite a positive way to work with anger, um, rather than denying it. But I think if you're just getting stuck in anger and blame and criticism. I think that's quite a harsh energy that kind of has almost like a holding, like a gripping type feel to it. And I think it doesn't allow um, change to come in. So I think it's okay as a transition between how something has been that's made you angry. But then I think there's a bit that has to come out where we're ang deliberately, consciously choosing to anchor something totally different. To what's yeah, peeling us off <laughs> so yes. if it's patriarchy yeah. that's peeling you off then yeah. yeah you know go out and be you know like Kristen <laughs> um, <laughs> being medicine you know be be totally different to it be be the solution in the world and if you're being the solution and if enough of us do that things like patriarchy and all the other things that go hand in hand with it that, that nobody likes you know like abuse just for example um that cannot withstand the power of us all standing out in our light. I just don't believe it can because positivity is stronger than negativity. I really believe that. So, yeah. Yes. 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 You and I, um, I don't know if you've still got a bit of time because I know we are sort of coming to, to a close here, but I did just want to kind of ask you a little bit. It is going a bit backwards. If you don't want to talk about it, it's okay. But um, talking about this kind of what happened with you know the, the witch trials because you, you had Salem and we had the Pendle witch trials in in the UK and I think you know one of the things that happened for women to survive and to not to not be killed they were kind of um throwing their sister under the bus basically because mm. they were saying I'm not the witch it's her uh -huh. yeah <laughs> in order to survive so my thinking is because you were talking a little bit how that can kind of like play out in women and it kind of like a mistrust of, of women and only wanting to hang out with men kind of thing yeah and I'm just wondering um you know is that kind of all part of the witch wound or is that something separate that's that's a really great question. And I kind of wanted to also like share just on the anger as well, like what you said about anchoring into something else, like something that's more useful because, you know, yes, anger is part of like the beautiful, like this beautiful range of human emotions that we have. And also like when we think about what, like on, on a logical and scientific space of what anger actually does is it it takes all of our intuition creativity logic and power and it moves it to our like our um our our limbs so we can fight flight you know or our jaw and and that was created so we could actually bite someone which is not useful in 2023 <laughs> and so you know, of course, it's like so normal to feel the feelings and also like giving yourself the opportunity to observe and free and clear it so you can anchor into something that is useful. So you can have your creativity, logic, intuition, and power to make that impact and difference in the world. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, really quickly to anchor that in with us too. But like with the sisterhood wound, absolutely, like, um, <laughs> It's like I mentioned before, it's like, you know, we, we experience this in our child. A lot of us experience it in our childhood. I know I was bullied intensely, um, from middle school, all through my senior year of high school. And it was something that I've done deep healing around. Um, and so when it comes to that sisterhood wound, it's like, there is, I believe that there is a connection with the witch wound 
as well. Um, because we're carrying this in our souls. It's that mistrust. It's that like, just that not really understanding even really why you don't get along with other people. And as an adult, other than the unconscious belief that was imprinted into our brains, but just like that mistrust, you'd rather be alone, feeling intimidated or uncomfortable in your skin to be around them. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. I see, I went through a phase where I dominantly hung out with men. Um, even though I, you know, I've got quite a quite a nasty history with men, um, <clears throat> and but I still chose to hang out with men rather than women. <laughs> yeah, Which just made me think. You know, hang on a minute. <laughs> right. Men were attacking me left, right, and centre, but I was to hang out with men rather than women. So I was just sort of thinking. Wow, I wonder just how deep this wound must be for me to have done that. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, well, it feels safer to be there, even though it's not safe, right? And, you know, that that could be a deep dive into several different aspects, but it's just, you know, like even, even myself, my husband being active duty and his, um, what he does in the military, they are very like, just a bunch of smart asses. They're always like joking around and messing around and, and there's so many laughs. And I was, I'm, I had always been like, well, I'd just rather hang out with my husband because everybody's freaking hilarious. And the women are just sitting around gossiping. And I'm like, but okay. Once I realized that I was like, okay, but why, why am I choosing? It's, it's more than just like, I don't want to be part of the gossiping because I could go in there and, and be a change maker in the conversation and talk about something light and fun. Mm. And so mm. it's like, but why, why was I choosing other than the laughs that I got to have? Why couldn't I have those laughs with women? Where is that uncomfortableness coming from and that disconnection coming from? Because it's certainly not something you know, that I've experienced in the recent past. <laughs> and so doing that mm -hmm. deep dive and healing that inner child and understanding that what my soul experienced as, you know, part of the witch era and what my ancestors experienced as I heal my inner child. And as I understand, then I liberate myself where I am now. Mm. Yeah, I really like that. It's interesting that we've had something similar there as well. Well, isn't it? Preferred to hang out with men. That mm -hmm. I kind of was the same. I was kind of like, oh, there's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, take everything so serious. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not like that now. I've got wonderful women friends, and actually, I don't really have any men. I seem to have just gone completely. <laughs> complete other end of the scale <laughs> I need to come and meet in the middle somewhere <laughs> I feel but um <laughs> but yeah that's kind of what happened with me it's interesting because I just never really had connected the dot of it being part of the witch wound so mm. um thank you for bringing that to light as well and mm. I do want to say that I am so sorry that you got bullied you're such a beautiful person I am really sorry that people bullied you you just so lovely. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I've done a lot of healing around it. And I think, you know, it's not really something that I have talked about a lot other than like passing, but it was, it was like death threats. My key, my, my car was keyed several times and spray painted. I was stalked. Like it was, it was intense. <laughs> and so, you know, I am a bit big advocate for anti-bullying and also doing the healing work. And even my son has been healing or healing from being bullied. And I'm put my foot down as soon as it started happening. I'm like, I can't control what other parents are doing or what the school is doing or what other children are doing other than I understand. And I see what's going on and I get to help my child rise above this.
Hello to the audience. We've just had a little technical hiccup there, um, but we are back. And I had just been saying to Kristen that I was sorry that she was bullied and then like the internet connection died. So I'm sorry that there's going to be a little disruption there and a bit of a gap. Um, sorry about that, Kristen. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. That's real life, right? Like I've had the B ones take off a couple different times. Like it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, isn't it? And we have all these little cute synchronicities, but we also have all these quirks that happen as well on the podcast. Like um, just before I started this podcast, I had a missed call on my phone, right? And I kind of went oh, that looks like a funny number. I don't know that number at all. And I thought, well, I'll look it up and see if it's a company because I've got quite a few um, calls that I'm kind of expecting. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it turned out it wasn't one of them. But when I looked, it was a missed call from an area in the UK called Cornwall. And it was from a place where there's a witchcraft museum. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? What? So strange. So I was like, um, I mean, it wasn't from the actual witchcraft museum, but from the area where the witchcraft yeah. museum is. That, that's where I was called, had a missed call from. And it's not a company or anything like that from the looks of things. So how strange. <laughs> so we do have these little quirks and synchronicities that go on every time with the podcast. There's always something with every one of them. So um, like, I feel like we are coming to an end. So I didn't know if you had anything that you haven't talked about that you want to tell us. Please do share now. And uh, no, I just wanted to add what you were saying because it was so funny. It was like, "Hello, the witch wound is calling and asking you to heal." Like the synchronicity of that is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like. Oh, here we go. <laughs> right. Um, but no, I, I think the thing that I would just love to leave you with is that you are more powerful than I think you even know. And you don't even know, have to understand or see yourself as powerful. Even if you are feeling the fear right now, just know that I see your power and that it just is one simple step at a time. It's like getting curious and inquisitive and just being like, Hmm, isn't that interesting? I noticed that. And so yes. let me just dive into that and liberate myself one thing at a time. We're not going to heal every single thing all at once. That would actually probably be very overwhelming, <laughs> but creating pockets of wins stack the wins, create the liberation and keep allowing yourself to tap into that power and that sovereignty that I know is within you. Oh, that, that's a lovely message. And thank you. I've also received that and taken it into my heart. So thank you so much. Do you want to yeah. just kind of find you? So your social media, which I love. Um, mm. So. Could you maybe just share that and, and where people can find you if they want to work with you as well? Yeah, so I am most active on Instagram, XO underscore Kristen Jones, which that'll be in the show notes since my name is spelled different. Um, and then definitely slide into my DMs. I'm a Gemini. I love to have conversations, like no strings attached. Just let me know what your favorite thing was about the episode. I always love to hear everyone's feedback. It, it brings me so much joy to meet you. And um, my website is andsherises.com. If you want to take a poke around there, I've got some great blog posts, a lot of great free resources, def definitely tons of different services and offers based on where you are, if that's something you're aligned. But um, yeah, definitely come take a peek in my social media and um, have a convo with me. I'd love to chat. Yeah, and I can, I can vouch for her. She's lovely, very friendly. So Thank you. <laughs> yeah no you are <laughs> very easy to get along with so 
Yeah, I hope that's been really helpful for the audience. I feel it will have been. I know it's really helped me. Thank you so much, Kristen. I really do appreciate everything that you've given today um, for me and the audience. And yeah. you yourself are very powerful. And I think what you're doing in the world is just amazing work. You know, as we've talked about on the show, there's a lot of fear around, you know, the witch wound and you're here stood there shining your light helping people to heal it that's really brave work so and it's beautiful work and it's so liberating for everyone so thank you so much for being the person that's doing that and for doing it in such a beautiful way as well you've really wow. got a lovely way about you so thank you thank you thank for coming you. on thank you and I also have I think I forgot to mention this but I do have a free um healing the witch wound guide that will elaborate on the things that we've talked about today and also give you some more tangible steps that you can um, put into motion to help liberate yourself as well. Yeah, and I'll put that in the show notes. So whatever platform you're listening to this on, if you just go into the actual text underneath all my writing, you will find the links in there. Or of course, contact Kristen direct and she'll be able to give you that as well. Okay, so it has just been wonderful. I've loved chatting with you. I feel enlightened and I feel lighter for your healing. So thank you so much. And You're welcome. I hope everybody has enjoyed this episode. And yeah, I'll be back soon with another episode. And Kristen, thank you so much. And bye bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Healing the Patriarchy with Love podcast. Just by listening to this show, you have contributed to the positive end to patriarchy. So thank you for that. Please follow, subscribe and share the podcast so we can amplify the good fervour and help others to join us. If you would like to support more episodes, please visit the show notes where you can donate. I'm a disabled and sick woman recovering from annihilation of my life due to severe abuse and I'm seeking to create a kinder world for all through this podcast. I appreciate any help you can give and once again, thank you for being here.